write something in 10 words or fewer? I decided to completely overanalyze this question. Anyway, first, let's remove all of the remaining ambiguity in this question. There are two main points. First, is it inclusive or exclusive? That's a pretty simple to answer. The question asks if it is 10 or fewer. According to logic, gates, that means it is either one or the other or both. And since the number of words can't be both 10 and fewer than 10 at the same time, it means it can either be one or the other, meaning it is inclusive. Second, which positional numbering system is the 10 in? I mean, seriously, it could be base 10 or base 2 or base 300 or base grams number, but the question was originally typed on the video screen using a keyboard with base 10 digits on it. So since it was typed with a base 10 numbering system, we can and safely assume it is in base 10, meaning this many words is the upper bound. Now we have our definition, we can start listing the possible options and numbers of words we could potentially write down. Since it's inclusive, we could write 10 words, and we could also write 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1, leaving us with 10 possible options. We could also write 0 words in 0, still fewer than 10, adding an 11th possible option for us. So there are 11 possible amounts of words we could write. But there are some unclear examples, such as is this 10 words or is it 11? Should this count as one word or two words? I think it's time to try to define what a word is. This is a word, I think we can all agree on that. But is this a word? I don't think it is. It isn't enough for a word to just be a bunch of letters, they also have to have at least one definition. The line between word and not word is very blurred, so I'll just have to classify a string of characters as a word that has an actual established meaning and a reputable source for a lack of better definitions. So now the next question to ask is whether or not hyphenated words and contractions count as one word or two. This is also a bit of a blurred line, but for the sake of this video I'll assume that hyphenated words and contractions are always only one word. Anyway, what about numbers? Are numbers words? What about symbols? You could say that a word can only have letters and nothing else, but I'll exclude contractions and hyphen words from being classified as words since they contain symbols such as apostrophes and hyphens, when we've already declared that they are words, so you should modify the rules that has to contain letters, but other symbols are fine, but if any of you include slash words like this, it would be classified as one word, but they're obviously two words, so the only symbols that do not separate a word into two words are the ones that act as a punctuation mark and not as a part of the word, meaning hyphens and apostrophes are the only symbols that probably concatenate two words together as one word. Now time to define what a letter is. The definition of what a letter is should be decently intuitive, but there are definitely some things that are not letters. A few examples of things that are not letters include pictures, numbers, symbols, half of a letter, starting to write a letter and stopping partway through, and attempting to write a letter but it ends up unrecognizable. Meaning if any of these are at the beginning or the end of the word, it will not be part of the word. If it is in the middle of the word, then it divides the word into two words since it would be considered a symbol. So now I have a pretty good definition of what a word is, and this is what I will use for the rest of this video. Now it is time to apply this definition to an example of words. Here is a bunch of gibberish that I made specifically to demonstrate whether or not it follows the rule of the original question. According to our definition from earlier, how many words is this? You know what, first I'm going to let you try to figure it out on your own, so I encourage you to pause this video and try it out for yourself. Okay, let's solve it. The at the start is definitely a word. The cool, 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 cool might seem like seven words, but it is only one because the hyphens. Some might argue that it's not a real word, but the hyphens are only used to tie the words together, and each cool is still a real word, meaning it is a word. Next is the egg slash bacon slash cheese equals bread. These are four words. The slash and the equal sign do not combine words together. Doctor, doctor does not have any separator between words, meaning it would be a single word, but it's not a real word. Doctor, doctor does not have a definition, so it does not count as a word. This is an Arabic word. This is not a real English word, I just made it up, but this is a real word. A is a word, but not three. And then finally, there's the gibberish. None of this is a word, despite the separators, but in between the numbers, you can see an A, which is a real word. This means that, despite how it looks, this segment does in fact follow the rules, and is exactly ten words. <laughs> Yep, even though I've already figured out what 10 words of fear really means, I will keep generalizing anyway. Since we define what a word is, we can use it to expand the amount of possible amounts of words we could write and start exploring fractional words. Think about this word. This is not a real English word, so it would be zero words, but it is also part of some longer words, such as infinity or information. So, is this zero words, or is it three-eighths of a word, or three-elevenths of a word? By looking at the text alone, you cannot really tell how much of a word inf is, but we could focus on what the person is intending to write and take the fraction of that. If the person was intending to write inf on its own, then it is zero words, since inf is not a word. But if they were intending to write infinity, then there's only three-eighths of a word. The same applies to if they were intending to write information. 
This means the amount of words this is depends on if the writer was intending to write the word ban or if they were intending to write the first half of banana. If it's the former, this would count as one word since ban is a real word, but if it's the latter, it's only half a word. This also means fractional words only exist if the writer was writing one on purpose. If they aren't, the number of words is either one or zero. So, how many combinations of fractional words can you make? Now, I literally got to this point when editing the video, and I originally wasn't going to figure this out, but I decided to try. The amount of combinations depends on the maximum word length you allow, which I'll call n. And to make the math simpler, I'm going to assume you can use only one word length, but you can use any combination of fractional words from that word. Now, the best way to solve a math problem like this is to start by solving a simpler problem. So, let's start by doing this problem with the question, one word or fewer, and then figure out the ten word one afterwards. Okay, I think it's helpful to think of the word as a glass, and the possible fractions of the word as different flavors of juice. But the juice is only available in the size of the fraction. How many juice mixes can you make? If n equals 1, you can only have juice 1, so 1. If n equals 2, you can have juice 1, 2 juice 1s, or juice 2, so there are 3 possible juices. n equals 3 means you can have juice 1, 2 juice 1s, 3 juice 1s, juice 2, juice 1 and juice 2, and juice 3, meaning there are 6 possible juices. Now I did the sequence up to n equals 6, and I thought it was the prime number different sequence, which is a really cool coincidence, but then I realized that 7 breaks the sequence and the formula is really weird and complex, so I'm just going to cheat a bit and call it juice n, which is a function that finds the amount of juice mixes for glass n. So that would be the answer, except we have to add 1 to account for 0 words since it's not accounted for in juice n, so the answer to our simplified problem is this. And then that makes our original problem of 10 words much simpler. All we have to do is raise juice n plus 1 to the power of 10, and there it is. Now obviously you don't actually need to make n the same thing every time like we assumed here, so the real number is actually much larger than this, but hopefully this gives the idea that yes, there are a lot of possible combinations of words we could make. Okay, let's use our new rules and fractional words to do something ridiculous. Remember when I said you could make n whatever you want? So let's make n whatever we want. To maximize the amount of fractional words, all we need to do is find a long word, such as Flossenhaus and Nihilopilification, and just let the fraction approach zero. And let the number of fractional words go higher. Let's see how high we can make it. What is the point of all this? Well, if you just take a long string of hyphenated words, you could take a small fraction of that, and it would still just look like one word, which you could use in a sentence. If you did this for every word in your answer, you could make a coherent looking sentence out of fractional words. If someone tells you, that is more than 10 words, just tell them that these are not words, they're tiny fractions of long strings of words joined by hyphens. So there you go. That was quite a pedantic and pointless video, and that was how to write something in 10 words or fewer.